I'm uh, Zoltan LeVay, sometimes known as Zolt. Uh, I'm uh, Imaging Team Lead in the Office of Public Outreach at Space Telescope Science Institute. The, the time it takes to process an image varies quite a bit, depending on the image and the type of observation that, the, that it was. We've done three or four hundred images. That's a very small fraction, of course, of the, all the images that the telescope makes. In the Hubble database of science, there are hundreds of thousands of images. This is an image of a group of galaxies called Stefan's Quintet. So there are a number of galaxies that are interacting with each other uh, under their own mutual gravity. So uh, this is the final product that we have. Uh, the cameras on the Hubble Space Telescope are not color cameras. They're black and white cameras. That's, um, they're constructed as grayscale or black and white cameras because we can get higher quality uh, images from them. Uh, the only color information we have is what color the filter is that's transmitting this light inside the camera. So a red filter throws away all the light except the red light and it transmits only red light. A blue filter transmits only blue light and, and blocks all the other light that's coming in. So this is a way for astronomers to pick different parts, different parts of the color spectrum that they want to study in detail. So uh, you can see that there are some differences between these images, but they're fairly subtle. Then we apply a color to each filter. The blue filter, we uh, apply a blue color. The yellow-green filter, we apply the green color. And the red infrared filter, we apply a red color. When we combine all those together, we end up with a full color image. That's what, what your eyes do. That's what every camera does. Uh, every color reproduction technology breaks apart the scene into different colors and then reconstructs it in a different way. So your eyes actually, or the different receptors in your eyes, are sensitive to different colors of light. And then your brain puts those images back together into a color image. The colors in the image uh, represent some of the physical processes that are going on in this in this object. Uh, this is a conglomeration of uh, several different galaxies. Uh, the, the blue that we see is coming predominantly from very hot, very bright, very young stars that shine predominantly in blue light. Uh, the redder areas are coming mostly from uh, cooler, smaller stars uh, that are mostly older stars. They're shining mostly in, in red light. And also there's a lot of dust and gas here that's absorbing light, mostly it's absorbing blue light and letting redder light shine through. So it's evidence of gas and dust in these galaxies that is obscuring the light from stars coming behind them. This is one of my favorite images. It's uh, called the Carina Nebula. It's a large area of gas and dust and stars in the constellation Carina, that's why it's called the Carina Nebula. A very large piece of the sky that has a lot of uh, gas and dust. It's very active. There's a lot of stars being, new stars being formed. What the telescope sees is a very small piece of the sky. Uh, some of these objects uh, cover more area than the telescope can see in one exposure, so we will build a little mosaic. So some of the images can be very complex between multiple exposures in each filter, multiple filters, and multiple pointings, uh, positions to build up a larger area of the sky. So there are 32 separate exposures uh, in adjacent areas of the sky that we were able to stitch together to, this, to make this one image. This image is, is constructed a little bit differently from some of our others. The color that we have was constructed from another image taken by a telescope on the ground in Chile, the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory. So the telescope on the ground took the images of the same region of the sky 
in three different colored filters. So they were looking at the light of hydrogen, also the light of sulfur, and the light of oxygen, which all these things shine at different, in different wavelengths which in different colors. The Hubble data is only black and white, but we use that as, as, the, um, as the brightness information. So you can essentially separate out the brightness information from the color information just as you, similarly to how you separate out the colors, the separate colors. So when we put that together, we kind of have the best of both worlds. So we have a full color image, but with the, with the resolution of Hubble. One really interesting area of this image is this uh, region of these pillars uh, there is light uh, and uh, material from the brighter stars in the region. They're pushing out a lot of material and very strong radiation, and that's actually what's causing these columns to have this shape. So there's, there's a there's stellar wind that's pushing against this material and actually pushing away some of the material and leaving these denser columns behind. And at the tips of these pillars, we see uh, jets of material shooting out from the very tip. And that's a telltale signature of a brand new star that just, just formed and turned on in these areas. And it, at some stage in their life, they shoot out this material in, in both directions. And we see the evidence of that uh, here in these jets that are coming out from these pillars. One interesting part of this image is this, this particular star called Eta Carina. It's uh, actually one of the brightest, largest, most massive stars that we know about. Astronomers think that this is a good candidate for a supernova uh, explosion, for this uh, star to explode as a supernova sometime. We, don't, we just don't know when. <laughs> This uh, is really affecting the entire region of space here. Uh, the star is, is so massive and so bright, it's blowing off lots of its own material. It has this strange uh, two lobes of material, lots of other stuff happening here. It's very dynamic. And all this material out here is all stuff that this star has been spewing out over the you know, thousands of years that it's been active. One recent image that we're working on right now is NGC 2841. This is uh, a, an image taken with the most recently installed camera on the Space Telescope uh, called the Widefield Camera 3. It's a large spiral galaxy a uh, big conglomeration of gas and stars and dust and all kinds of things uh, arranged in a, in a big flat disk. At the center of the galaxy, there's a, the, the density of stars increases dramatically. And in this case, we see a fair amount of uh, new stars being formed. These blue and pink spots are areas where there are uh, new stars being formed out of the gas. Uh, the pink areas are the, are the uh, dense gas that's collapsing to form the stars, and then when they turn on as stars, they shine very brightly in blue light, so we're seeing these patches of clusters of blue stars. I've constructed um, at least a couple of hundred Hubble images. I constructed the Sombrero Galaxy, NGC 1300, which is another one of my favorite images. The Whirlpool Galaxy, the Horsehead Nebula, Butterfly Nebula from Lightfield Camera 3, a star named Fomalhaut. There's a planet around this star that was imaged by Hubble. That one's uh, called the Egg Nebula. That's uh, one of the first images from the infrared camera, the NICMOS infrared camera. The Orion Nebula image I did, uh, the Hubble Deep Fields, all the deep fields. 